Hello everyone, Cap here and welcome back to some more Mechabellum. I got a good match for us today. It is between Sarah and Sacco, two very well-known names and very strong players. Let's see what they are up to. Sarah known for playing standard. In my opinion, I don't think I have seen Sarah playing aggro a single time. So <laughs> Sarah is uh, very much a standard player. Sacco can play both. Was at some point famous for forcing aggro all the time but not anymore let's see what he's up to in this match blue is sarah heavy armor specialist with crawlers and sledgehammers and red is sacco as a rhino specialist with tanks and storm collars is he actually going aggressive i'm wondering with tanks and storm collars kind of an unconventional aggro start but also rhino specialist Kind of good for aggro as well. Let's see. Did at least move this clump of units to the front already. But okay, now it's repositioning. Actually going to play standard here. Sarah putting the crawlers horizontally behind the tower. This way they cannot get pulled by a forward pack of fangs or something. So if you have them vertical behind the both towers and the opponent puts something here in the front middle all these crawlers will get pulled towards the middle and not split around the towers and yeah when they don't split that's usually pretty bad because they can get taken out very quickly by arc lights or something and more fangs here by red Buying time. Also fangs help with crawlers of course. But uh, mainly good chaff to buy time for the storm callers. So the storm callers can take down these sledgehammers. Uh, this one. <laughs> There's like one fang and uh, tanking all these storm caller shots. That's so anno annoying when that happens when you're playing storm callers. Oh yeah, not good enough quite yet. That chamber is pushing in. Left side was overrun. Even some crawlers came through. By the way, this is the weekend tournament Asia champion against the mini tournament European champion. Okay. Both players at the top of their games at the moment, it seems. Hit by blue. Mm, maybe deployment. Oh, actually, phoenixes. Thing. Echo is adding phoenixes here. And pick the extended range phoenix. Uh, blue added some crawlers and storm callers and leveled the sledgehammers and red did add one pack of phoenixes and some more fangs these crawlers coming in from the side though can be quite annoying for red they can run into the dead zone of the storm callers, but not quite enough. Some storm callers still hit a good chunk of the crawlers, and the rest were taken out by the fangs here. Uh, but yeah, no anti air by the way, by blue here. So the phoenixes will just win this round. Level 2 sledgehammers give so much XP. Can get leveled now. Ooh, so many good choices here. Round 3, supply specialist still very good, charged ammo. Really? Both None of the players picked up supply specialist. Going for the tempo place instead, picking up charged ammo. 
going on a Vulcan for red. What is Sacco doing? Since when does Sacco play this? <laughs> Whatever this is. <laughs> like standard Vulcan with Phoenix. That does not seem like Sacco at all. Maybe he's trying something new. Um, Blue is adding some Mustangs. And some more crawlers here. But these crawlers will just get dragged here by this Vulcan. Vulcan going to be very good here on the right. Will take out all the crawlers. Also middle level 2 crawlers as well. And now working on the Mustangs and now the Sledgehammers. This Vulcan is so good here. I also think it looks better for Sacco right now, but I don't trust this. I would vote for Sacco here, but I don't trust Sacco playing something like this. <laughs> because he usually plays other stuff. So I know this is Sarah's type of game, so Sarah knows how to go forward from this, I think. Giant Hunter for blue. Yeah, already one giant on the board. Uh, Sacco now getting the level 2 Rhino though, by the way. And that is actually somewhat of a problem for blue. Not the best uh, damage for this Rhino. Uh, red did skip. And yeah, Giant Hunter for blue. Can start to get value here, and actually there's another Vulcan getting added, so now two giants on the board. If Sarah can stabilize, this will be very good for Sarah with Giant Hunter over time. But for that, Sarah really needs to kill these Vulcans, of course. Some more Mustangs on the left as well, and range. These Sledgehammers also level 2, they were already level 2 last turn. Might want to consider also leveling the Stormcallers, but no credits right now. Stormcaller damage kind of important here for the Vulcans. Level on the Phoenixes for red. And more fangs, I believe. And one more pack of Phoenixes. So yeah, this is basically Sacco's entire composition, it feels like. A lot of fangs everywhere. Then the two Vulcans here with some Stormcallers and now adding some more Phoenixes behind. So Vulcan Phoenix kind of. With Chaff and some Stormcallers. Right Vulcan is going down, left Vulcan will also go down in a moment here. So at least the two Giants are going down, so that's 100 credits for Sarah. Still at minus 50 though, by the way, from Giant Hunter, because it costs 100. Plus missing out on the 50 from skip. That's 150, so... Still at minus 50 right now. Will be at plus 50 next turn if he manages to kill both giants again. But yeah. Um, round 4, red here. Not a ton of damage, but also... Not that little damage either. Eye Specialist showing up again, round 5 though. Now Attack Specialist maybe. Could be good here. Anti-Interference module on the Rhino. And Attack Specialist for blue. Mating points, okay, here we go. Mating points for blue to address the Vulcans and also the Rhino. And red is going for Incendiary Bomb. Will be, will help a lot with uh, the chaff here. Though I feel like the chaff was already basically cleared by the Vulcan without incendiary. So I'm not sure if this is going to help much on top of that. We will see. Aya will land here or here. These Mustangs will still be on the outside and not get hit by the fire. Yeah, I'm not sure actually. 
Uh, the incendiary bomb might not do that much in this uh, scenario. Mobile beacon coming in on the Rhino, trying to rush towards this tower here. And more phoenixes getting added, so yeah, it's two Vulcans here and then just back it up with phoenixes basically. And put the fire, uh, put the ground on fire. Ideally also kill the Mustangs with it and then the phoenixes and reign supreme. Yeah, helping with this chaff in the middle here, but the Mustangs on the outsides are still alive. Matting points, this one taking down the, vo uh, the Rhino now. But other than that, they are still stuck on chaff here. Okay, this Vulcan is going down now. Right Vulcan. Not sure the right Vulcan is going to die. Doesn't look like it. Yeah. Uh, blue needs better shaft here. These fangs are too annoying. They live for too long and they distract the melting points for too long. Orbital definitely can help with this. Not only with the fangs but also with the phoenixes. Orbital really good here for blue. Red picking up orbital as well but this can get buried by blue. So the actives in this round here are in theory better for blue. But yeah, um, not a lot of credits left to invest into more chaff clear for blue though. Because of the orbital also, blue had to put down quite a few barriers. And picking up orbital himself and putting down the barriers, there's basically nothing left. Uh, getting a little bit more chaff here and some uh, temporary range from the tower. So yeah, thanks not really addressed here. And Sako got the shield now on the phoenixes, so they will not die as easily to the orbital. And when they are still alive, they might once again carry this round to victory. And blue is really low here, this could be the last round. Let's see how the orbitals hit. And if blue can uh, lock on quicker to the Vulcans and everything with the melting points this turn. Melting points just working on these fangs in the middle all the time. Finally locking onto the Vulcans though. And yeah, this is looking good now for, uh, for her blue. In the middle, there are fangs going left and right in the middle. So blue really should put some better Shafty in the middle next turn. Maybe Mustangs or something. Though I'm not sure about the path thing, there's fire here on the left and fire here on the right. So if they split from the middle, they would just drive into the fire probably. Uh, not sure about the positioning here. But definitely in the middle, tanks walking left and right and distracting both the melting points in the middle. Um, blue definitely needs to address that. And blue is addressing that, this turn at least, with incendiary bomb. Also incendiary bomb for red as well. Could take down a ton of these crawlers and mustangs and everything on the right. Uh, both players once again bubbling everything. Uh, this fire is still going to land though, so this is looking very good for red. Uh, blues fire not really coming down much. Will not even kill these fangs I think because they split and walk under the barriers here left and right. So yeah, looking much better for red here. From the actives at least.
Uh, repositioning this Vulcan here so it doesn't get locked on by the melting point as quickly. Interesting. And yeah, there are more Mustangs here, by the way, now in the middle. And Mustangs do have the splash upgrade as well. So Chaff Clear is being worked on now by Blue. Or was worked on and is now there, basically. This Vulcan locked on super quickly by this uh, melting point. So right side looking very nice. Also, with the barrier here, these Mustangs actually stay back far enough for quite a while. Do not drive into this fire. Those round though, quite a few leveled phoenixes that can take down the melting points somewhat quickly. Our debuff coming in. Yep, going to be the round 4 red here. How much damage is this? Blue is really low. Oof. <laughs> Blue at 46 HP here. 46 HP and a dream. Skill specialist. Oh yeah, a lot of skills. And get some good value out of this. And improve firepower control on some... Not on Mustangs. Actually going on a melting point here. Interesting. And two more melting points added. Steel balls? Backline steel balls coming in here by Sacco. What is this? Oh, steel balls with armor? Trying to tank these Mustangs, I guess, so they don't take out the Phoenixes, I assume. Crawler spawn now also on the melting points. And underground or subterranean blitz it's called on the crawlers as well. So they don't die as quickly to the fire on the ground and can actually run through and serve their purpose again as chaff. Oh, this fire landing here though, taking down a ton of Mustangs. These steel balls on the left, actually starting to lock on here, but finally go down. Other Vulcan locked on too as well, but this melting point is really low here. Oh my god, <laughs> so close, but now it's going down, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, right side still has two very much healthy uh, melting points though. And some crawlers coming in from the... Water production. These are so leveled though. Are they enough? Oh, tower debuff coming in just in time. Oh my god. <laughs> Empty crawlers. No. Crawlers. MVP. Three crawlers coming in. If these crawlers didn't make it, a blue would be dead here. Holy. The crawlers uh, taking the tower here and then also taking the... Storm callers, holy, this was so jeez. <laughs> that was that was something very very close here. If just one storm caller would have survived, a blue would be dead here. Okay, but um, some actives coming off cooldown here again now with skill specialist. So, oil is back. Underground threat also was, I think, picked up this turn.
Hackers. This game has everything. Hackers now by blue added for these steel balls. More hackers. Three hackers. Trying to address uh, these steel balls uh, better. They did take quite a while uh, to go down last turn. Oil bomb though with fire, everything on fire here. And even the underground crawlers don't make it through, that's too thick of fire on the ground. Hacker getting the ball here, Hacker starting the hacking things. <laughs> Not a lot though, I feel like they only got like two hack, uh, two steel vaults, three steel vaults. Actually hacking now though, also a Vulcan, but Vulcan just gets one tapped by the phoenixes. And yeah, once again, Melting Point's holding the line here. I feel like if Blue would pick up energy absorption now, it would be basically not GG because Red is super healthy, but that would win Blue the round for sure. Being able to heal up on a Vulcan on occasion. But also, by the way, still with Giant Hunter, the giant hunter value is ticking here for blue. There are four Vulcans on the board now. That is 200 credits a turn extra if blue gets them all. And blue has to get them all because otherwise blue would be dead. Smoke bomb coming down. Red might want to pick senior attack to be honest. More damage uh, to get the, yeah. More damage for the phoenixes in particular to get down the melting points. And some melting points level 2 here. Orbital coming down again. Fire coming down again. All the actives are landing. And more, <laughs> more melting points as well. This is quite the game, it's round 10 already. Might be a comeback for blue here. Let's see if uh, Sako can manage to close it out finally. With some more actives coming down here. That shot now on these phoenixes, they really hurt, that's a good upgrade. Um, they will not mess around, they can definitely take down these melting points very quickly now when they lurk on. Like level 3 with charge shot, 24k per hit. Um, so that's 48k per both phoenixes shooting. Phoenix is still not connected to the melting points though. One in the middle here did take down half the melting point, but not enough. And yeah, melting points now just. Also, what is happening here? <laughs> uh, Vulcan is stuck behind the tower indefinitely. Uh, very, very good programming here. Very good game. Very good pathing. And yeah. Absolutely demolished this turn, and that's a ton of damage. It is not enough to kill, I believe. Yeah, it's not enough. But that was quite the round for blue here. And what is red going to do this turn? Can red bring this back at all? Photon emission. Will actually help these crawlers to stay alive and get through the fire. 
That's uh, potentially quite big, buying a lot more time on the right side. And more mating points, I believe. Yeah, two more mating points added. Bubbles coming down. Bill has actives here, by the way. Also, Orbital Bombardment and Fire. Oh, this is such a good round for Blue now. And Sacco does not have these actives now. EMP on Phoenixes. Mm, I'm not sure it's going to make the difference here. Also putting down bubbles. And another Vulcan here. Amp range again and loaned by blue makes sense. Also temp range and loaned by red. Yeah, I uh, this is looking rough for red here. Not sure the EMP is that big of a game changer, but let's find out. Yeah, Vulcan's getting smacked here by the melting points and the phoenixes are not enough. Uh, they don't provide enough health and damage to quickly take down these. <laughs> and Sarah is very happy. Um, GG's. This is... <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. With 46 HP bringing it back. That's why I didn't want to vote on Sacco by the way. I know that Sarah knows these types of games, these standard types of games, and uh, also in the later rounds. I, I'm not sure if Sacco was too familiar with this. Awesome match, this was great. Alright, I also have one more replay for you guys that I want to share with you. It is between one of my viewers who sent me this replay and Major Etienne. So yeah, also no name here. Uh, let's get into that one. Blue here is a supply specialist with arc lights and sledgehammers and is already up to something interesting, going for field recovery and selling one pack of the sledgehammers right away. And is going for storm callers, interesting. Um, and red is a marksman specialist with arc lights, storm callers and is adding some fangs and of course level 3 orange boy. Very interesting round one here by blue. No chaff and 100 credits left right now. Not sure if blue wants to buy another arc light or is just saving. Actually just saving. What is happening here? That's major Etienne by the way. That's not a uh, low level player or anything. <laughs> so yeah, let's see what, what's going to happen here. Doesn't that look like a great round one, going to be honest. And yeah. Storm callers are very nice into this, but at the same time they are not enough. There's no not enough stuff to buy time for these storm callers. Plus obviously red also has storm callers. And the level 3 marksman just one shotting everything anyways. Alright, let's see what uh, blue is up to now though. Kind of curious what's uh, the plan here after this round one. Both players going for a missile strike. War Swarm could have also been quite good here early on. And another Sledgehammer getting sold. And this missile strike is going to land really well. And blue protecting against the missile strike with a bubble here in the middle. Not protecting against the wasp swarm though, by the way. So wasps would have been really good here. 
red already reacting here to storm colors with mobile beacon crawlers yeah blue added more storm colors one right one left and something else one pack of fangs okay Fangs actually positioned in a way that they still got kind of hit by that missile strike. But it's okay, I guess. Also, these Stormcallers, though. Sniping the level 3 marksman now. Very good for blue here. That's a lot of XP, and in general, just taking out that marksman. This marksman would have one shot like this Arc Light and these so uh, Stormcallers and everything. And yeah, really good round here now for blue. Very good missile strike, a very good bubble. And tower debuff will come in here in a bit and these storm callers should take out the other storm callers. Yep. Yield airdrop for both players. I used to pick it all the time, somehow it's gotten out of favor for me personally, um, especially when I'm going up against someone who already has Stormcallers. Stormcallers really good damage against barriers. Also I'm not an aggressive player, I think when you're playing aggressive it might be better of a pick still, um, because you can land the airdrop in the flank aggressively and that can oftentimes be very very strong. Also more by beacon crawlers now by blue. Speed airdrop here on the left and also in general three barriers here now for blue. And more storm crawlers for red. A uh, good choice here. Will be very helpful with these barriers. But yeah, overall looks like kind of a classic setup here. Some fangs, some crawlers, some arc lights, and some stone callers. Kind of by both players. Actually, red did sell the orange man. Not really good in, into this board here. No very good targets for a level 3 marksman. Instead, uh, phoenixes were picked up by red. And if these fangs go down, these phoenixes will actually clean up everything. And also will probably take down some barriers maybe with stone callers underneath. You will see. But phoenixes, a very good pick here. And also all these stone callers helping with shield break as well. Some crawlers coming in though. And are in the dead zone of these storm crawlers now. Middle bar barrier fell already. Left barrier is going to fall by the looks of it. A moment here. So that is some credits gone now for blue. Okay, where are these phoenixes going to this tower? And then probably to this tower and will also take down this barrier as well. Yeah, oh my god, <laughs> that's so annoying. Um, yeah, Phoenix is taking down all the barriers, you know. Just because these two crawlers are still alive, these are actually hurtful now to blue, basically. Because uh, these are alive, these Phoenixes are taking down this barrier, and it's gone. Also taking down another tower, and that's... Wait, is that enough XP? How much do crawlers give? Oh no, time ran out. <laughs> Okay, no no XP from the crawlers. Both players picking up uh, junior manufacturing, I believe. Yeah, junior manufacturing for both players. More arc lights for blue and range on the arc lights. So trash clear is saved. That being said, there's not a ton of chaff here. 
well now there are also mustangs being added and range arc lights definitely also help with those and now blue is also going for phoenixes yeah this looks like a kind of standard um standard setup matchup between both players stormcrawlers fangs crawlers arc lights phoenixes some mustangs here as well to help clean up any stragglers Double mobile beacon crawlers here against the opponent's storm callers. Looking very standard so far. Standard uh, range war, that is. No, no chaff here on the right. These phoenixes coming in and taking down everything. Uh, blue definitely needs to add some chaff. Far right and far left probably also. Didn't pay attention to the left as much. But definitely far right. Uh, but yeah. Looking like a close round here. It's up to the phoenixes to decide. Taking down the tower. Will they take down the phoenixes? One down, and the other one is targeted as well, yep. Going to be uh, the round for blue here. Ice module. Not sure what blue would put it on. Yeah, okay. Picking up Mustangs as well. <laughs> it's really a mirror matchup. So blue now also adding two packs of Mustangs and one with the haste module. And red also picking the haste module. <laughs> this is so, so mirrored, this entire match here. It's uh, very, very similar by both players. Uh, bubbles coming down again, and uh, Missile Strike is off cooldown. Also range on the arc lights for red. <laughs> It's coming down. Going to protect the main army, but not the Mustangs in the back. That's often how this happens, by the way, with Missile Strike in later rounds. Bubbles often come down where it makes sense, where the main uh, chunk of the army is around the towers. But if you have Mustangs in the back, they are usually not protected by barriers, and that's where the Missile Strike can still land. And Major obviously knows that. Taking down those Mustangs there. Uh, looking better for blue here once again. That being said though, these types of matches, there's not a ton of damage coming in because Stormcallers just wreck each other all the time and wreck basically everything that's on the ground and usually it happens quite often that uh, only some phoenixes survive just like here right now only these two low health phoenixes are the remaining army here and that's not a lot of damage so round six here in a moment and both players almost 3.5k Oh, barrier still goes down at least. But yeah, just 200 damage. It's, yeah, not a lot of damage coming in here.
Senior attack is probably... I don't I don't really like the item here. You only have level 1 Mustangs. And Mustangs also benefit in general from senior attack quite a bit. And with bubbles down and everything, also Stormcallers benefit from the extra attack. Not sure. I feel like uh, I would have preferred senior attack here uh, personally. But maybe I'm wrong and this one pack of level 1 Mustangs will carry from now on. We will see. It drops coming down. Kind of defensive here, even behind the storm callers. I guess wants to protect the Mustangs in the future from the next missile strike or something, if the barrier holds until then. Also, this way the barrier is not protecting the tower, so it won't go down when the opponent's units just try to take out the tower. Range Phoenixes. Range on these storm callers. So red does have an advantage with these storm callers. Also now shielded fangs. These will last uh, quite a while longer against arc lights and storm callers. Still looking pretty solid here for blue once again and even more solid than before. Three packs of phoenixes alive now. The range probably did make the difference here so they stayed out of harm's way and actually could survive here until the very end. But yeah everything on the ground <laughs> once again basically dead so it's only the phoenixes dealing damage and yeah, two storm callers. Again, not a lot of damage. When is someone going for War Factory or something? I'm wondering. Both for damage, but also to just pull another threat out. And yeah, just War Factory to, with Missile Intercept or something for the Stormcallers. Here's a good spot as well, by the way. I would like to see a War Factory by a blue, not by red probably. Only three level one storm callers. Not really necessary, at least not for the missile intercept. Would still just go war factory in general with like production of sorts. Ripple shielded fangs here. So red kind of building up a chaff army here. Fangs. All across the board, also uh, vertically, so they come in at different points in time and provide chaff support here for as long as possible. Yeah, these are already level 2 because they shredded last turn. Allied top 1 last turn, by the way, uh, in damage. <laughs> So the item is really, is so strong on Mustangs, even on level 1 Mustangs, I guess. Kind of surprised that we are seeing no fire yet by none of the players. I feel like fire on stormcallers here would definitely help against, especially for blue, I think, against all these fangs trickling in. They would just uh, run into the fire that's already on the ground. Uh, but yeah, apparently it's not really needed. 
Blue's still ahead, looking kind of similar to last round. Three packs of Phoenixes alive. Uh, opponent's Stormcallers though, still working, yeah, and still taking down the Stormcallers of Blue's. And more Stormcallers falling. And more Stormcallers falling. So it's again, basically only the Phoenix damage coming in. And two Stormcallers. Actually exactly the same as last turn, I think. Heavy Mustang. Heavy Mustang could be good against uh, Fire on the ground. Charged Ammo also good, Lightning Storm also good. Smoke Bomb could also really help if it's not getting buried of course. Lightning Storm com coming in here on the left. Already going to take out quite a bit of chaff and maybe the phoenixes. They are not getting bubbled here. They are not protected by the barriers. And hey, okay, here we go. War Factory is coming down uh, by blue now. Double War Factory, by the way. Is he going for missile intercept? No. Going for efficient maintenance for now. And temp range. A lot more Phoenix is added by red. And red is going for fire now on the Stormcallers. So this could be a good round for red potentially. With the fire on the ground now. Um... And blue is not really equipped to deal with it just yet. Also though, war factories do have a lot of HP. So it will take a while for red to actually kill the war factories. However, with the fire on the ground and the Mustangs burning and getting taken out here, I feel like this will be decided by Red's Phoenixes here. There is no anti-air left, I think. Well, there are two Phoenixes from blue. But that might not be enough here. Storm and fire on the ground this turn and more phoenixes all really helping red here. And the two war factories they well they just provided HP on the board I guess. They are not really needed for their damage. There's only a lot of small stuff and the damage is kind of wasted from the war factories. And also no missile interceptor or anything that would help. Not yet, at least. Maybe we'll see Miss now. We'll see. Also, Orbitals coming down from both sides now. And two more attacks on the Phoenixes. Getting Energy Shield and EMP. EMP can disable these War Factories. And War Factories are getting two more attacks. So if the Phoenixes by red do connect and actually attack the War Factories, blue will be very sad. No more missile intercept and also no more phoenix production when that happens. Also once again the orbital here might take down these phoenixes. And with the extra energy shield, it's less likely that these phoenixes will die to the orbital. Also, since these war factories are so far away, I feel like still this would have been a better spot for the war factory. A bit more centered. Uh, to actually intercept these uh, stormcallers right away. 
Because right now I think the Stormcallers will land a couple of shots and fire will be on the ground before they get intercepted because the war factories are too far back. So yeah, middle is on fire. Here's some fire on the right. Let's see. And tech disabled. And tech disabled. Blue is sad. <laughs> Going for the classic uh, Phoenix EMP counter to the war factories and it's working. Yep. And it's working really well because a lot of credits invested by Blue into these war factories and into these tags. And not a ton of production came out and also missile inter once missile intercept stops the damage from the stormcrawlers comes in and is actually pretty good at taking down the war factory as well. So yeah, looking very good here for red. Uh, is it enough damage already? I don't think so. Yeah, no, it's not. Not quite enough yet. Round 10. Here we go. Blue still gets a chance to make this right. Incendiary bomb for red and enhancement module for blue. It's a bit late for enhancement module. I feel like incendiary could have been and would have been better here now at this point round 10. Uh, blue really needs to win <laughs> period and just one free upgrade here on a uh, unit especially it's not even free so he's broke he broke even just now so the module costs 50 and by not skipping you lose 50 as well so it's 100 and you upgrade it here one pack of phoenixes for 100 so you broke you broke even right now and I feel like fire would have been a better choice here as well. Try to take down some fangs and mustangs. And red is doing fire and the oil bomb connecting. So there will be fire here across the entire board. And that will burn everything. All the crawlers at the very least. Not sure if the mustangs will drive in or not. Does not really look like it. We will see how this turns out. Um, also, steel ball production and another war factory here. Okay, this war factory is now in the spot that I would have preferred earlier already. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Can these war factory now not get their text disabled as quickly? However, all the chaff in front dies very quickly now to the fire. That will lead to the war factory getting attacked quicker, in theory. No shot landed just yet. Okay, now the middle one is disabled with all these phoenixes. Uh, left one is dis disabled as well. Right one also now disabled. Sad times for blue here. And yeah, Phoenix EMP, too good. Also, by the way, Quantum Reassembly was picked up. Not sure it was really necessary. Well, it's happening here, actually. Still a couple of Phoenixes on the right, and now Red's Phoenixes are respawning on the left. So they will ensure that Red will win this round. And it should be enough damage with these respawning Phoenixes as well. Yep. EMP, too good. GG's. I was wondering, I saw some crawlers coming in here and distracting the phoenixes for a while in the middle. I did not see what happened. Uh, I was looking for parasitic ammo and there was parasitic ammo by the way, here on this arc light. Uh, that actually distracted phoenixes in the middle for a very long time. Otherwise, these phoenixes could have attacked uh, Red's phoenixes in the middle. That actually made also quite a bit of a difference here. Uh, but yeah, GG's. Um, well played by... Actually, this one is not top damage, or not even in the top three here now, by the way. The Mustang with the item. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, but yeah, anyways. GG's, well played. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.